30. For each of the following structures, determine the hybridization requested and whether the electrons will be delocalized. Okay, and then in this question, we just have to find the hybridization of each carbon. Well, it's lovely that they gave us the drawing. Thank you very much. So all we have to do is we just have to look at this Lewis structure and find the hybridization of each carbon. Now there's three total carbons here. There's one here, there's one here, and then there's one over here. So we're going to be doing each hybridization separately. Just know that in a whole Lewis structure, there might be many different types of hybridizations. So there's no such thing as having like a hybridization for a entire molecule. It's always for the single atoms. So I wrote down here everything that we need to know for hybridization. Just know that there's a total of five hybridizations and these letters S, P, and D, they all represent just the orbitals that are coming together to form your sigma bond overlapping in each bond. So just know that your hybridization has everything to do with the number of letters. For example, sp3 has one s and three p's, right? That's a total of four letters. If I take one p away, that's sp2, two p's, and that's a total of three letters. And then if I strip one away, that's sp, that's a total of two letters. Did I say that this was a total of two letters? I meant three if I did. But anyway, let's keep, let's keep going. So the number of letters always equals the number of things right? So two letters, two things, three letters, three things. And just know that one thing is always a single bond, one double bond. So even though you see two lines here, you'll group it together as one thing. A triple bond has three lines, but it's still classified as one thing and one lone pair. So now we're just going to be focusing on, let's do this carbon, right? So that means that I don't care about what's going on with these carbons. So what's going on around that carbon? Well, I have one single bond, that's one thing. I have another single bond, that's two things. I have another single bond that's bound to that carbon and one more single bond. So for this carbon, there's four things, which basically means that there's four letters. Four things, four letters, that's SP3. So there's the hybridization of that carbon. Now we're just gonna do the same thing for the other two. And when I'm going to look at this carbon, I'm just going to get rid of these highlighted um, bonds here. Okay, so now let's focus on this carbon. Well, what's going on with that carbon? Well, it's got a single bond, so that's one thing. It's got another single bond, that's two things. And then it has a double bond. I'm gonna group that all together by just saying that's one thing. So I have one, two, three things. So in this case, this carbon has three things, three things, three letters, sp2 hybridized, right? So right off the bat, we can see that there are different hybridizations in a single molecule, and that's totally okay. Maybe I'll use blue here. All right, last one. Let's just get rid of these colors, just to not be confusing. And now let's do this carbon. What's going on with this carbon? Well, it's got one single bond, that's one thing. Another single bond, that's two things. Another single bond, that's three things. And finally, another single bond, that's four things around the carbon, right? No lone pairs. So four things, four letters, just like the first one. This is sp3. And maybe I will box that off. Boop, boop, boop. So basically, we finished the first part of the question. We wanted to know all the hybridizations of each carbon. So let me just get rid of these colors. And now we're gonna answer the second part. We need to know whether those electrons will be delocalized. Now, if electrons are delocalized, that means that they are not going to stay put, right? If they're delocalized, they're not localized. They're not staying in one place. Now, when we're looking for electrons that are delocalized, chances are you're looking for um, electrons that are in double bonds. Now, electrons that are in double bonds, sometimes they can move, which means that these electrons here are not always going to be with this oxygen. Maybe, if the electrons were delocalized, maybe I can put a double bond between carbon to carbon. 
the idea is that you're basically just taking your double bond and like shifting it like a clock, right? So you're, you're putting it at different positions. So maybe I could have a double bond here. Maybe I could have a double bond here. And then that would make this double bond a single bond. However, if I do put a double bond to this carbon, right? This carbon's going to have way too many bonds because it's all bound to hydrogens. Hydrogen loves to have one bond. Now, another trick to notice whether you're going to have delocalized electrons is to just see if you have other oxygens around that element. But in this case, I only have the one oxygen. Generally speaking, if electrons are going to be delocalized, you'll have multiple oxygens surrounded by that one element. But since here it's just carbon and there's no other oxygens, I can't really uh, put this double bond somewhere else. So these will not be delocalized. They will not be delocalized electrons. In fact, they will be localized. So the opposite of delocalized is localized. And that's it. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. We're almost at 30,000 subscribers. And yeah, it's all because of you guys. So thank you so much for all your support. Thank you for being part of this community. And I will talk to you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.